We've seen the theory of Nuke's color management. Now it's time to take a look at some workflow examples. Hopefully, your workflow will be in here somewhere. Keep in mind these are just single frame slap comps. They've not been sweetened or beautified at all. And these still frames are available in the project media folder so you can play along too. We'll take a look at our first example here, which is a high def video composite. We'll start with this green screen and look at the read node. As you can see, we're bringing in a DPX file. Now there is a confusion about DPX in this regard. In a DPX file, you can have log images or linear images because the high def video format supports DPX. So if it's a DPX file with linear high def video, you probably want to use the Rec 709 color space LUT. See, there's quite a bit of difference. Nuke had guessed the sRGB. So we'll put back the Rec 709 and notice that when I change it to Rec 709, the read node now displays a little extra label that lets you know you put in a custom color space LUT. Again, we'll take a look at the church, and it also is the default sRGB, and I'm going to change that to Rec 709. Then we do our key, and we come down to the right node and look at the comp. Let's put the right node in the property panels. And I'm going to write this out as a DPX file, as you can see here. The difference is I'm doing video, and Nuke assumes that the color space, if it's DPX, is going to be log Cineon. So I'm going to have to tell it, no, I want Rec 709 as my output LUT. And again, Nuke adds a little note to the right node. Okay, we'll clear the property bin and look at the next example. Our next example is linear CGI over a log background. We'll get the viewer up here, fill the viewer with a picture, and take a look at the fish read node. This is a 16-bit TIFF image, so Nuke correctly guessed that the default should be sRGB color space. Notice that the pre-multiply feature has been enabled. The next read node over here is the background plate, which is a DPX file with log data. So we can see here that it was DPX, and Nuke correctly guessed it was log data, so it used the default Cineon LUT, which is correct. I'll open the right node after the composite, and we can see that this project, the deliverable, was a DPX file. And of course, since we're doing a movie, we got a log background. We want the DPX file to be using the Cineon LUT. So what we have here now is a DPX log file ready to go to the DI process or the film recorder. Now let's clear the property bin and take a look at our next example. Put that one in the viewer. And here we're compositing a log image over a linear matte painting or it could be a CGI background. The workflow would be the same. So we'll zoom in here. Take a look at our log green screen. And it's a Cineon file. So Nuke has correctly guessed that we want to use the Cineon LUT to linearize it. Absolutely right. Good one for Nuke. Looking at the matte painting. It's a 16-bit TIFF file. You can see that right here. So Nuke has correctly guessed the default to be sRGB. Good. Good for Nuke. Then we'll open up the right node, and this project required an EXR output. So Nuke has correctly guessed the default should be linear. EXR files are linear floating point files, so there's no color space conversion from Nuke's native linear light space. Remember, the linear LUT is the no change LUT. All right, let's clear the property bin. Take a look at the next workflow. Ah, here we're compositing a log image over a log image. Take a look at the green screen. Fill the viewer. Put the read node in the property panel. And this is a Cineon file. So Nuke has correctly guessed to linearize it with the Cineon LUT. The background is another Cineon file, so it too gets the Cineon LUT. We do our composite. We come to the right file, open up the right file, and our output is a Cineon file, so Nuke has correctly guessed the color space should be Cineon. So, log over log, Cineon LUT on both inputs and Cineon LUT on the output. We'll clear this out of the property bin. Take a look at our next case. 
Okay, here things get a little bit twitchy. What we have here is a graphic element that the CGI department has given us a motion UV file in order to apply some motion blur to it. And here's the motion UV file. I know, doesn't look like much, but Nuke knows what to do with it. So let's take a look at the setup for this. We'll zoom into our graphic element, and we see that it's a TIFF file. It's actually a 16-bit TIFF file. So Nuke has correctly guessed that the default is sRGB. Good for Nuke. Then we'll come over to our motion UV file. Now the story here is the CGI department has rendered a 32-bit floating point image in a TIFF file format. Nuke saw the TIFF file extension, sniffed the file, and correctly determined that it was floating point. So Nuke's color space is linear. Even though this is a TIFF image, it does not contain picture information, it contains data. So Nuke knew to leave it linear, that is, no change. Now the motion UV file came in on the RGBA channels, so we used the shuffle copy to put it into the motion channels, and then we added our vector blur, and now we're ready to write it out. And again, the output is a TIFF file, and we've decided that we're going to write it out as a 16-bit TIFF, because the input image was 16 bits. Another special case, rotoscoping. Take a look at this one. We'll clear the property panel. Take a look at this rotoscope. Zoom in. Our read node is an 8-bit TIFF file. Nuke has correctly guessed the color space to be sRGB. Good, good. The next is the roto. I'm going to switch the viewer to show us just the red channel. And we'll zoom in for a close-up look. So this is the read node for the roto file. It's a one-channel TIFF file. And Nuke has incorrectly guessed it's sRGB. Nuke guessed sRGB because it's an 8-bit TIFF file. Nuke doesn't know there's a roto in there. A roto is not an image. It is not a picture of light. So we have to tell Nuke to use the linear input LUT and make no change on that roto. As you can see, there's a very big difference between the sRGB and the linear versions. If we come down here to the right node, set the viewer back to normal, what I've done is I've used the roto to mask off a hideous gamma change in this grade node in order to show you the huge difference between the correct one, which is linear, and the incorrect one. So you can see the effect on the masking operation right there. Last, we'll look at the right node. And in this case, we wanted to output a QuickTime movie. So we just put the .mov file extension. And Nuke guesses the color space to be sRGB, which is fine. But when you do a QuickTime movie, you get to choose which codec you want to use. I chose H.264. Once you've picked your codec, you can open up the Advanced button, and you'll see additional features so that you can fine-tune that codec for the settings you want. So there you have it. Several workflow examples of working with Nuke's color management system. I hope your workflow is in there somewhere, and that you found these videos to be helpful. This is Steve Wright for the Foundry, saying goodbye and good compositing.